Welcome to Statics. Distributed loads. So far, our focus has been on loads that are concentrated at a point. They are frequently referred to as point loads. However, we often encounter a different loading condition referred to as distributed loads. The example on the left is called a uniform distributed load. The example on the right is referred to as a linearly distributed load or triangle distributed load. Instead of being concentrated at a point, a distributed load is spread out over a distance. Let's consider an example. Here is a concrete masonry block, commonly used in building construction. Let's say that one 12-inch long block weighs 20 pounds. If we stacked blocks five tall and eight blocks long end to end, we would create a distributed loading condition on this beam. A single stack of blocks would weigh 100 pounds. That single stack occupies a 12-inch section of the beam length. So we could say that this distributed load has a magnitude of 100 pounds per feet, oriented downward. I can model the beam like this, with a series of arrows pointing downward over the 8-foot length of the beam. The arrows show direction. The magnitude is 100 pounds per foot. A lowercase w is the notation often used for distributed loads. Now suppose we stack the blocks like this, with a 10-block stack on the left end, decreasing to zero blocks on the right end. The magnitude of the distributed load at the left end is 200 pounds per foot. However, the distributed load changes as we move from left to right. We could simplify this load as a triangular distributed load and model the loading like this. Note that the linear distributed load goes from a maximum of 200 pounds per foot oriented downward on the left to zero pounds per foot on the right. A distributed load can be simplified as a single resultant force acting at a point on the member. The resultant force is the sum of all the load over the member. For the beam on the left, we can calculate the resultant load by multiplying the total number of blocks times the weight of one block. I get 40 blocks total and a resultant force of 800 pounds. For the beam on the right, there are a total of 55 blocks. At 20 pounds each, the resultant force is 1,100 pounds. These resultant loads are acting downward. Let's calculate the resultant loads again, but this time using the distributed load magnitude. For the beam on the left, the uniform distributed load is 100 pounds per foot. We can calculate the magnitude of the resultant of a uniform distributed load as the load times its length, 8 feet we get the same resultant load, 800 pounds acting downward. For the beam on the right, the linearly distributed load has a magnitude of 200 pounds per foot acting downward. I will get the resultant force by multiplying the average of the maximum and minimum load by the length. It is 1 half times 200 pounds per foot times 11 feet. I get the same result as before, 1100 pounds acting downward. Note that the resultant force is nothing more than a calculation of the area under the distributed load shape. For the uniform load, it is the height of the load times its length. For the triangular distributed load, it is one-half times the height times the length. Not only do we need to know the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, but to have an equivalent system, we also need to know where the resultant force is located on the member. The location of the resultant force is at the centroid of the load. The centroid is also known as the center of mass or center of gravity. That means you can think of the centroid as the point on the load where you can balance it across your finger. You can see that for a rectangular load, the centroid is right in the middle. For the triangular load, the centroid is off-center, closer to the tall end of the triangle. For simple shapes, the location of the centroid can be easily found in tables. For example, the back cover of a printed textbook. They are typically shown like these examples here. Notice that the centroid is located at a single point defined by both a horizontal and vertical dimension. Since the resultant force acts through the centroid, the vertical dimension is not important for our examples. Note that for a triangle, the centroid is located horizontally
one-third of the base dimension over from the tall end of the triangle. So when thinking of balancing the load on our finger, our finger would need to be directly below the centroid, that is, right in the middle for the uniform load, and one-third the distance from the big end of the triangular load. Let's now look at a more general way to find the resultant force and centroid for a distributed load. Here is a beam with a linearly distributed load of height h and length b. I can represent this load as a linear equation in terms of x, where the x-axis originates at the left end of the load and points to the right. As we just discussed, the resultant force is equal to the area under the load curve. Or in other words, the resultant force is the integral of the load over its length. For this example, I integrate our linear load equation over its full length. Simplifying, in a few steps, I get a resultant force equal to the height times the base over 2, which is the area of a triangle. The resultant force direction is downward, since our distributed load is pointing down. We can find the location of the centroid by summing moments. The resultant moment caused by the resultant force is equal to the sum of the moments caused by the distributed load. We can think of the distributed load as numerous, infinitesimally small individual loads stacked side by side along the beam. The resultant moment is the centroid distance x bar times the resultant force, negative by the right hand rule, and the sum of the moments is the sum of the x distance to the location of every individual load on the beam times its magnitude, defined as the w of x function. We add them all up with an integral. Rearranging the equation to solve for the centroid x bar, we get a general equation for calculating the horizontal location of the centroid of a shape. Let's use it to find the centroid of the load in our example. x bar is equal to the integral of x times the area under the load curve, divided by the resultant, which is the area under the load curve. Integrating and simplifying gives x bar equal to one-third of the base dimension, as measured from the origin, which is what we expected to get. In summary, for any shape of distributed load, we get the resultant force as the area under the load function, or in other words, the integral of the load function over its length. We get the location of the centroid as the integral of x times the load function divided by the integral of the load function. Often, calculus is not necessary. If a load can be divided into simple shapes, we won't need it. For example, let's say we wanted to find the resultant force for this distributed load. We can break this load into a single rectangle and a single triangle. The resultant force for the area under the rectangular uniform load is the load magnitude, 5 kilonewtons per meter, times its length, 3 meters. I get 15 kilonewtons. The resultant force for the triangular load will be the area under the load. Note that the height of the triangle is 12 minus 5, or 7 kilonewtons per meter. The resultant force is 1 half times the height 7 kilonewtons per meter times the base, 1.5 meters, which is 5.25 kilonewtons. The resultant force for the full load, then, is the sum of the resultants of the part. I get 20.75 kilonewtons. Now, to get the centroid location, we will set the resultant moment of the whole system about point O equal to the sum of the moments of the two separate parts. I write x bar times the resultant force negative by the right-hand rule, is equal to the resultant force of the rectangular uniform load section times its centroid plus the resultant force of the triangle load section times its centroid, both negative by our convention. Now I solve for x bar. The centroid of the uniform load is right at its midpoint, 1.5 meters. The centroid of the triangle load is located at one-third its base dimension from the tall end of the triangle. The base dimension is 1.5 meters, so its centroid is 0.5 meters from the right end. That means it is 2.5 meters from point O, where we are summing moments. I divide by the resultant load to get the x-bar is 1.72 meters from point O. Use this method for any loading condition that can be easily broken into a few simple shapes.